guys. Welcome back to another episode of R&D Garage. I want to extend a warm welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel, for liking my videos, and for sharing my videos. Today I am working on my little Honda Civic hatchback. I'm super excited. She's just about ready to race. However, she still needs a slight tune. So today I'm going to show you how to basically adjust the idle speed and timing. We're going to do a compression check and then we're going to do the spark plug. So stay tuned. Okay guys, step one is take your little car out for a spin because you need to get her up to normal operating temperatures. Super important. Okay, step two. We're gonna go ahead and find the service connector here. It's located on the passenger side of the car by the kick panel. And what we're gonna do is basically short her out. So you can use like a wire or like a, you know, um, not a safety pin, a paper clip. That's what I was trying to think of. And basically on the other side of the pins here, and we are gonna do like a close up shot here so you can see. But to short it out, you're gonna insert one side over here the other side and these are the the deep holes these aren't the shallow ones so just like this now we're just about ready to use our timing light so let's go ahead and hook up everything so first I've got my battery cables here I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the black the black right in the middle there and then go ahead and move this booty aside and hook up the red there we go. And now I've got my plug wire pickup. And I'm going to go ahead and hook it on to the number one plug wire down here. And what's awesome about Honda is they actually label each one of their plug wires, like one, two, three. You got it. And different cars have different wires to hook on. Um, we actually, since Honda's pretty simple, we're not going to use this guy here. And another thing, be careful when you're hooking anything up on your car because once you start it to run the timing light, um, you don't want any cables getting, you know, caught in fans or anything like that. But we look pretty good here, so let's move on. Okay guys, before we start adjusting the timing, I want to point out a few things. So if you can see this rib right here, I made a white mark on top of it. This is super important that you know where this is because that's basically the alignment bar. Looking further down, you see that other white mark there. That's known as TDC, basically top dead center, also important. Further down from that, we have a pink, pink notch with uh, two black notches, one on either side. The pink is 16 degrees and the black notch on either side is plus or minus two. Okay guys, well, hopefully you can hear me over the powerful Honda Civic engine here. <laughs> but um, first thing you wanna do before you check the timing is check the idle speed and it should be between 700 and 800 RPMs. So this is pretty good. Okay, now hopefully you guys can also see what I'm doing here because you know shutter speeds on cameras, sometimes it doesn't quite pick it up, but we're gonna check it out. So go ahead and shine the timing light down here. And what we're looking for is the pink dot to line up perfectly with the rim. And this is as close to perfect as I think we're gonna get. So it looks like nothing needs to be done here. Awesome. So normally if you're doing this timing adjustment on like a stock car, there would be the values on a sticker underneath the hood. Well, we have an aftermarket carbon fiber hood, so unfortunately there's no values to be found. So we're using the service manual. So come closer and I'm gonna give you a couple tips here. So you see the distributor between this distributor and the head, I made basically a line. There's three bolts here that we're gonna be working with. Um, 12, 12 millimeter bolts, one right here, one on the side and one underneath. And so when we say we're adjusting the timing, what you're gonna do is loosen all three just barely and basically kind of move the distributor just a little bit like adjusting, go back over with your timing gun, you know, see if it matches up, and then basically keep doing that back and forth until the pink dot matches up with the bar. Okay guys, we're specifically filming this because I don't want you to forget to take out your jumper. Super important, the car will not run right. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. Plug this guy back in. 
way down into the rubber booty and then tuck behind. Okay guys, time for the compression check. The first step on that is we're going to remove all four of these little acorn bolts and then take off the plug wire cover. That's super loose. are going to be a little toasty because ah, the car has been running. There we go. Okay, now we're going to pop this off. And actually, I'm going to put the bolts in here so I don't lose them. Set them aside and we're ready to move on. Now we're going to remove the plug wires so we can pop them out. Pop. And of course you need sound effects. Pop. Oh, it's still hot. Pop. <laughs> I love that sound. There we go. Okay, and if you can, try to lift them out as a unit, which sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Come on. That first one is kind of tightest. There we go. I'm going to set these aside over here while making a racket and we're going to move on. Okay, so now we're going to be taking out our spark plugs. So to do this, you're going to need a ratchet extension and of course the socket. And as anybody who's ever taken out a spark plug before knows it's kind of hellish to lose the socket in this in down in the cylinder there. So if you want to take some electrical tape, Tape the socket to the extension. Perfect. Okay, let's get started here. So first we're just going to go ahead and loosen each one. And then I'm going to take off the extension, or the ratchet, sorry, and unscrew them until the spark plug comes out. And when you take out the spark plugs, what you're gonna wanna do basically is have a piece of paper with one, two, three, four, and then match up each one because it's super important that the spark plugs go back into the exact cylinder they came out of. Okay, now we're gonna take the plugs out by hand. Make sure it's seated on the spark plug. There we go. There's number one, Ooh, which is super duper hot. <laughs> Let the guy with the more heat resistant hands. Okay, now we're working on two. So again, make sure it's seated on the spark plug. Start turning. I should probably be wearing my gloves for this. Oh, that's too hot here. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. Let's go for three. I may have burned myself on that one. Oh my god, that is the song that's playing right now. <laughs> And I'm just going to hand that to you. Thank you. And the last one. Sorry, that song is so cringy. <laughs> There we go. Okay, time to move on. 
So before we actually put the compression tool in, I wanted to point out a couple things. Before you begin, always make sure the threads on your tool are perfect and that they actually fit down in the cylinder because you do not want to destroy anything in your head. Very, very bad. Uh, second, always make sure there's an O-ring on here because it'll seat the tool properly. And when you put it in, take it off, make sure that O-ring is still there. Okay, so I'm just about ready to insert my tool, but there are two more things. I swear we're almost ready, guys. Um, remember those little acorn bolts I took off here? Make sure they're at least a mile away, okay? Don't set them here. Don't send them on the corner. Don't even put them like on the corner of the hood because they will magically fall into your hood or your head and you're screwed, okay? So, yeah. Also, it's probably a good idea to kind of wipe a little bit before you begin as well because we really don't want dirt, schmutz, what have you, falling into the cylinders as well. This is just super expensive if this messes up, okay? You, you guys you guys know that. Okay, let's go ahead. So, okay, this is also kind of super delicate. We're gonna slip this down in the cylinder, kind of feel around, and you don't wanna just, you know, go ahead and yank it around. You wanna be super careful Yes, there we go. So you can feel the threads catching. So this is good. And I always kind of like to hold on to it with the other hand as well, just to kind of keep it vertical. And so I'm turning, I'm turning, and it's going to be, I want to call it finger tight. So you don't want to just make it super tight, but come on. There we go. Okay. Well, we'll go fit the other piece on. So now we're ready to install our gauge. So basically this is kind of like a quick release thing. It won't go on unless you shove up the cover here. So I'm just gonna kind of put the gauge down. There we go. Easy enough. Okay, so we've got our compression tool inserted. We've made sure all the spark plugs are out. There's no debris, our plug wires are off where it can't get hurt, and our car is still at normal operating temperature. So what the plan is now is we're going to start the car back up, we're going to pin the throttle, and we're going to wait until it goes through about 10 cycles, and then we're going to read the value. Hit it. Perfect. Okay, so this value may not mean anything to you guys because obviously all our cars are different, but I am reading 210. So now we're gonna go to the service manual and see how that measures up. So if you notice your cranking speed is kind of going down, your battery needs to be charged. So again, super important that your battery is working great. Okay, so you saw us test the first cylinder. Uh, go ahead and repeat that process with the next three and then you can move on. So there's lots of information online to help you read your spark plugs and make sure they're still looking great. Um, I'm not gonna give you tips on that just because there are a lot of resources. So suffice to say, I checked all four of mine and they're looking pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw them back in. Okay, so we're ready to put our spark plugs back in. I'm just gonna show you the first one and then you know to repeat the process again three more times. So with these, you want to be super duper careful. You don't want to wreck the threads on the spark plug. You don't want to wreck the threads down in the head. Um, yeah, I can't say enough. Just be careful if something feels weird while you're, you know, ratcheting it down there or, you know, hand threading, whatever, just stop <laughs> and then try to figure it out. So, okay, here we go. So just lightly and gently slide it into the cylinder there and start turning and you can yeah you can feel the threads catch so this is good and I'm just yes perfect I'm just going to use or basically thread by hand until I feel it stop there we go perfect okay this is awesome. This part always makes me nervous because just don't want to screw this up. Okay, now we're going to grab our tool here and we basically, we already know the torque this should be set at and we're going to put it um, on the video as usual. But again, just be very, very careful. Now, 
No, it just makes me so nervous. Yay. Okay, we're gonna move on and do it with our next three. Okay guys, well the spark plugs are back in. So now we're gonna go ahead and throw back on our plug wires and the plug wire cover. So the thing with these is obviously they're easy to get back on, but you wanna make sure that the rubber booties are firmly seated around the seal. So I'm gonna show you guys. And luckily they only go in basically one way. So that's kind of nice. So I'm gonna seat these in first and then I'm gonna pop them all on. And you can use either two thumbs or your palm. That's good. And when you hear that little suction, that's a sign that you've got them. Oh. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to flatten these down just a little bit. And get my cover here. And luckily, these have uh, cooled down in the meantime. So I'm gonna. Oh. These are small even by my standards. There we go. <laughs> Apparently, there's a ghost in the warehouse today. So we're putting these acorn bolts back on. Or nuts. up with the ratchet and have it set to on. move on. So of course I'm going to remind you that there is one last thing you should do before you throw down the hood and turn on the car again. Just take a quick sweep. Make sure you haven't left any tools sitting on, you know, the head, in the corners of the car. There's no like rags, no uh, acorn bolts that haven't quite made it onto the cover. Just anything, you know, bolts tightened, all that, but we are good. So with that part of the tune finished, this girl is ready to race. And when I say girl, I mean both me and my car. <laughs> so I'm super excited. I'm so glad you guys came on this journey with me. So as always, thank you guys for watching my video. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to R&D Garage. And don't worry, we still have a few more projects in the mix to bring to you. Have a great week.